Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about continuous rotation servo motors as we use them in our level 2 kits. And on screen right now, I just have some subroutines that I made for a few of the different functions of the robot. So for example, there's like forward, back, left, right, there's a stop, and then there's forward and backwards at half speed. Now, interestingly, um, unlike the DC motors that we've used in the past, I can't just plug these uh, subroutines in. I just can't uh, put this code in willy-nilly and expect my robot to do exactly what these things are supposed to do. I have to go through this process of calibration to get the motors to behave. So the first step on the way to calibrating the motors is coming up with some sort of calibration test, which I have right here. Now you can see I'm using a program block rather than a loop do, and that is uh, somewhat important. That's going to give me the ability to uh, trigger which mode I'm in, so I can be in the mode where the motors should be stopped, and then I can press a button and have the servo motors uh, hopefully moving forward, and then I can press the reset button to put it back into this, this mode. Now, the way this code works is I have this while loop here with a uh, button pull up as my test. So after I press the button that is located on pin 2, I go from this to this. So this first half here, the servos at 90 and 90, should be my stop. Uh, I should have with both of those angles set at 90 the motors being completely still. And then here, with the servo motors, I have one on 180 and another on one. This ought to allow me to uh, have both my motors moving forward at full speed. So my robot should propel itself forward in this latter half. But we're going to have to calibrate our motors to get that behavior that we want. All right, so before I start uh, calibrating my car I have here, I wanted to go over something that I think is a point of confusion for a lot of people. Um, in the code that I just showed you, um, there is what a lot of people think is a small discrepancy that my forward code has one of my motors at an angle of 180 and one of them at an angle of 1. Um, and a lot of people think that's unintended, that they should probably be both be the same angle if both motors are supposed to help propel the car forward or backwards. So that's not the case, and I'm going to show you why. So let's say I want to move forward. I have here, I'm looking at the left wheel on my car. So to propel the car forward, the motor needs to rotate like this. So it needs to rotate counterclockwise. If I flip the car over like this, this one also needs to help the car propel forward. So it needs to move like this. It needs to move clockwise. So they're both rotating in opposite directions. And the reason for this is because if we're looking at the left motor, it's like this, and the right motor is flipped to it. So they need to be rotating in opposite directions to get uniform motion forward or backwards. Moving on, just what do I mean by calibrating in the first place? Well, if I look at my servo motors very carefully on the back of them, I see this little uh, Phillips head right here. And I can actually take this screw and I can go ahead and insert it in here and adjust by turning clockwise or counterclockwise. And so what I'm doing there is I'm actually changing the functionality of this motor. I'm changing what it perceives as the stop command, what it perceives as the go fast in the forward direction command, what it perceives as going fast in the backwards direction command, and everything in between. So I'm really altering the, uh, the functionality a lot by just twisting back and forth. Getting back to my car, I have already uploaded the servo calibration test code into here. And if you'll remember, I should, when I plug in, get a stop at the beginning. And after that, I can press this button and I should get the car going forward. Now, obviously, I kind of wanted to have something interesting to do in this video, so I intentionally uncalibrated these motors so that you can see me work through the process of calibrating the motors. Now, something to keep in mind is for your students, 
calibrating these these motors may take uh, a while. It may take uh, an entire class. It may take half an hour, and that's okay. Um, it's something that I know there's probably some amount of frustration because they would like to see it just work. So this is a good time for them to kind of learn the uh, the value of testing and experimenting. So I'm going to plug this in and we're going to have craziness happen. So just remember, I'm aiming to at first get these motors to stop and after pressing this button, I'm going to see if I can get it to move forward. All right, so we got motion on both motors. I'm going to go ahead and get in here and try to recalibrate this one first. It's a little difficult for me because I have big hands. Your students might have an easier time getting in there. So I got this motor stopped completely. Now I got to work on this guy. Come on. No. All right, come on. There we go. There we go. All right, so both motors are stopped. Now, the moment of truth is, if I press this button, do both of the, the motors go in the direction that allows it to move forward? So let's see. Hey, what do you know? All right. I feel like mine is turning a bit rather than moving straight forward. Although I believe that's because this wheel is kind of not screwed on very well. All right, so I can also press the reset button on the robot's brain. For me, that is an Arduino Uno. For you, it might be a Barnabas noggin. But I can press that reset button. It goes back to the stop position. And then I can press this and get the robot moving forward once again. So I have a nice little stop start as well. So yeah, there you guys go. Um, let me know if you have any questions or you know you had difficulty getting this to work yourself. Until then. See you guys later.